morning everybody. I'm the Reverend Anne. I'm speaking to you from St Giles. This is the Little Lady Chapel. I'm looking for, towards the middle of this week when on the 21st of September we'll be remembering a saint and it's Saint Matthew. Last time I did online worship I was thinking about another saint who was an apostle and that was Saint Bartholomew. We don't know much about him, but we certainly do know a lot more about St. Matthew. So St. Matthew's Day, the 21st of September. We think of him as a tax collector. We also think of him as a very Jewish writer of the gospel. And of course, he's one of the 12 chosen by Jesus. We have a picture of the Last Supper behind us and at as to which one he is, I have no idea. But he will be there, sitting with Jesus at the Last Supper. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Blessed are you, creator of all. To you be praise and glory for ever. As your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation, may we rejoice in this day that you have made. As we wake refreshed from the depths of sleep, open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will. That the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, Blessed be God for ever. The night has passed. The day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. And as we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And we come to our Lord in penitence and sorrow for the times that we've let him down. In fact, let ourselves down. And we ask for his forgiveness. And the saints were faithful unto death and now dwell in the heavenly kingdom forever as we celebrate their joy. Let us bring to the Lord our sins and our weaknesses and ask for his mercy. We confess to you our selfishness and lack of love. Fill us with your spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We confess to you our fear and failure in sharing our faith. Fill us with your spirit. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. We confess to you our stubbornness and lack of trust. Fill us with your spirit. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. For our canticle today, I'm going to use some words from a psalm. And this is Psalm 34, one of the psalms set for today. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. My soul shall glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Look upon him and be radiant 
and your faces shall not be ashamed. The poor soul cried, and the Lord heard me and saved me from all my troubles. The angels of the Lord encamp around those that fear him and deliver them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is gracious. Blessed is the one who trusts in him. Fear the Lord, all you his holy ones, for those who fear him lack nothing. And our reading today is from St. Matthew chapter 9, beginning to read at verse 9. And it's the call of Matthew. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth. And he said to him, follow me. And Matthew got up and followed him. And as he sat at dinner in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to Jesus' disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when Jesus heard this, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Wednesday is St Matthew's Day. Now we often think of the disciples as being those rough and ready fishermen. Well, Matthew is very different. He would have been literate, intelligent, and to be honest, very unpopular. He was a tax collector. Not popular now and not popular then. But at least they are not thieves today as they were in Jesus' time. They were quislings in the pay of the hatred Roman occupiers. They were overcharged, putting money into their own pockets and into the pockets of the Romans. And that money would be sent back to Rome or to pay the occupying forces. Some years ago, I had a few problems with the tax man. No, no, I wasn't dealing the tax man. It was quite a few problems, actually. The tax man said... I think you should be self-assessed. I have no idea why, because my income is my old age pension, and that's not a full one. So my income is not even up as far as the tax-free allowance. And it took three months, three months of long, useless phone calls, ringing them for nearly an hour and a half on a few occasions, and at the end of an hour and a half, they put the phone down on me. And I hadn't spoken to anybody. I just had the music and somebody who told me that my call was important to them. Hmm, yes. They used to send me notifications from the tax office. And I had to put the code in within two weeks of this notification being sent or at least the date on the letter. Unfortunately, all the notifications came three weeks after the date on the letter. Therefore, they were out of date and none of them would be accepted. Eventually, after 26 goes, I had one which was correct and it was on the 13th day. It would have run out the following day. But on the 13th day, I received it and immediately ran to my computer, put the code in, and I am now self-assessed. And I still don't know why. Although they did give me a rebate, but I didn't actually pay any tax. So after a short while, the refund 
was refunded and I don't owe them anything and they don't owe me anything. So fine, fine. Don't think it was quite like that in Jesus' day. Well, at least they didn't have the internet for which they must have been very grateful. But I do feel for the Pharisees of Jesus' day when they condemned tax collectors and linked them along with sinners. In my wildest dreams, the tax man of today is nothing like the tax man of Jesus' day because we were on the whole corrupt. They did steal. There was always that skimming off the top, charging more than they should. And even when they were honest, the money required by the tax collectors was always going to Rome and always for the upkeep of the occupiers. So the Jews were, in effect, paying for their own occupation. No wonder they weren't very happy with tax collectors. When Jesus approached Matthew, the tax man, he is sitting in his booth, it was a very brave move to call Matthew to be a follower of Christ. And yet that is what happened. Jesus saw Matthew and he saw beyond what everybody else saw. He didn't see a corrupt official, a quizzling, sitting in his booth. He saw an honest man. He saw a man of faith, a man who had very Jewish leanings, but a man of deep faith. And so he called him. And do you know what happened? There was no suggestion that Matthew think, sat there thinking, hmm, shall I, shan't I? We read this. And he got up and followed him. He got up and he followed him. Matthew was leaving behind a very lucrative business. And the next thing we see is Jesus approached him and is calling his friends, his friends. His friends are tax collectors. His friends are those sinners that the Pharisees were going on about. And he said, come along, this is the Lord Jesus. He's going to save my sins. Let's have a meal together. Oh my goodness. So that didn't go down very well with the authorities, did he? He was sitting and he was eating with tax collectors and sinners. And yet that's how Jesus does it. He doesn't say, well, this is a really lovely group. They're all very, very holy. So I'll stay with them. He's quite happy to go out and speak to people. Speak to people who maybe aren't quite as good and nice as we are. And he'll say, I'll eat with you. I'll eat with you. We'll come together and let's chat about things. I wonder how willing we are to be called out to serve Jesus. How much do any of us give up to follow Jesus? The call is for all of us. Jesus calls us sometimes for great and very difficult work, but more often for the work of being his servant in his world. The one who looks out and cares and just tries to live as Jesus lived. Serving Jesus, following his call, lost Matthew everything to gain everything. He called his friends together. He was proud to be seen as someone Jesus wanted to know. May we be prepared to listen to God's call and act upon it. I wonder sometime, will the call be repeated if we refuse his call? We would lose so much if we don't answer the call of God. Remember how many are called, few chosen. Is that because we want to limit the call? I will give you this of my life, Lord, but the rest I want for myself. 
I see Matthew deep in thought, deep in argument with those who owe tax. Suddenly seeing and hearing Jesus, realising that money is not the only thing that matters in life. He sees Jesus, he sees the divine. And the work he has done suddenly seems cheap and nasty. So he jumps up. I have a picture of his account books, his pens and his money going flying. And he takes the path which will not lead to status and wealth. He takes the path that will take him to know God, to trust Jesus. The world's status is gone. The walk is the pilgrim walk with Christ, and it's just beginning. And maybe, yes, it would be Matthew who would write that gospel, who would pen the story of the Jesus he met at the tax booth and the Jesus he saw and he loved and he never looked back. He found, he picked up his pen, not for his account books, but to write the story, the gospel story. Now, what are we called to do? So little, but yet so much for the gospel. Amen. Thank you, Lord, that you tr trust us so much that you feel you can call us to your service. Help us to respond to your call and give all we can to your work and worship in this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our country, that the new leadership may be driven by care and not dogma, that a way may be found to control inflation and high prices, that those who are struggling may be helped, and that our country may come back from the evils of recession and job losses. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So many people are sick, some with illness that will never find a cure, others in a hospital or awaiting treatment. Others are lonely and sick at home, frail, unable to get about as they would. Lord God, you are the God of healing and love. Make yourself known to those who call upon you. Bring healing, if that may be. But above all, Lord, bring a sense of your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. When we lose someone, Father, it's really hard to bear. And even though the years pass, the loss, that pain, still burns in our hearts. Be with all those who've lost someone they have loved, and especially those who have been recently bereaved. Be with families trying to make adjustments in their life. In a moment, as we remember the families that we know and love, Hold them. Give them the knowledge that their loved ones are safe with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And the collect for St. Matthew's Day. O Almighty God, whose blessed Son called Matthew the text collector to be an apostle and an evangelist, give us grace to forsake the selfish pursuit of gain and the possessive love of riches, that we may follow in the way of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigned with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed are those who trust in him. Eternal God, in your faithful and enduring love, you call us to share in your gracious covenant in Jesus Christ. In obedience, we hear and accept your commands. In love, we seek to do your perfect will. With joy, we offer ourselves anew to you. We are no longer our own, but yours. Amen. And the blessing. May the Father from whom every family in earth and heaven receives its name strengthen you with his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you. Be with those you love be with those for whom you pray and remain with you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>